Hey everyone, welcome back to the Star Studio with Mare. I have just completed a very quick um, skin care and skin prep video. And so now I thought I would take you through the next step of what I would do if I'm just going out on an average day and would like to not really have a heavy makeup look and but still look really radiant and glowing. So I've already prepped my skin by washing it so it's freshly washed. I've just added my three combined skincare products that I adore, the CeraVe, the NUX uh, liquid and the Inky List polyglutamic acid and moisturized. My hands are also very well moisturized at this point. So if I want to apply anything with my fingers, now would be the time to do it. And that's something just to remember that if you are going to do your makeup, try to do it on a freshly prepped face as much as possible. Let your skincare product sink into your skin. Just check and see if there's any areas that are feeling a little bit dry that might need a little bit of extra love. And then start in with the products that you adore to help brighten your skin and you know make you look a little bit more alive. So I do have to say, the next product I'm gonna show you guys is, <laughs> it's a little bit of a spendier product, okay? And not all of the makeup that I use is very expensive. A lot of it is actually quite reasonable for the amount of time that you can use it and the quantity of product that you get. So, but this one, this is, this is from Burberry and it is a luminizing fluid that is just, oh, I love this stuff. It is so beautiful and it's very, very sheer. It has a little pinky tone to it, um, but it is just wonderful. And one squirt will do ya. And I kind of go on the fronts of my cheeks, a little bit here, a little tiny bit above my um, eyebrows where I might want a little bit of a highlight but definitely under the eyes and up the cheekbones a little bit down the nose still have a little bit on the back of my hand okay and then I would go down sort of the front of my throat think of where light normally hits you you know if you look in the mirror and you see what where on the different planes or the different surfaces of your face that the light is hitting, that's where you want highlighter to go. You, it's, it's like you wouldn't use bronzer somewhere where the sun don't shine. Think of your luminizer in the same way. If you wanted to spotlight the tip of your nose like they do on Instagram, you would just put a little tiny dot on here, blend it in very gently, and then you have that little pop of light on your nose, which for me, I don't know. I kind of get that anyway because I have like this little button sort of nose. <laughs> but anyway, then I put a little bit on my lower cheekbones. So kind of underneath where you would contour, just putting a little bit there without actually adding a contour because there's no light hitting the underside of your cheekbones. It just kind of almost gives you that natural sort of, um, not necessarily cutting in, but it gives you a little bit more dimension. And not that I have very prominent cheekbones. I, I, I like my cheekbones, but I'm definitely not like, you know, Paris supermodel cheekbone girl. I, not even when I do that. <laughs> so anyway, so I've got some light and, you know, if we were gonna be doing the decollete, there's a whole way of um, contouring and highlighting depending on what effects you want, but you can always just go a little bit on the top of your collarbones and see, cause I'm doing all of this with my hands. I could do this with a beauty blender. I could do it with a brush. The brush um, does tend to, you know, it can spread out your product a little bit more because you're not applying it with an absorbent surface like fingers or with a beauty blender. So if you wanted to use even less product and you want just a little tiny bit, you might want to apply it, um, you know, just dot it very spar sparingly with your fingers and then use a brush and just kind of buff it in gently. Um, but this this is quite effective because I, I don't really want a ton of highlighter and you can see there's not that much left on my hands. They look a little bit like they have a sheen, but it's not like glitter or sparkles or anything of that description. I do like to keep clean face cloths so that I can wipe off excess product and that's something that 
These are dollar store towels and the best thing about them is that you can wash them in super hot water with bleach and you don't really have to care about stains. So um, I prefer doing that rather than using dark um, cloths because then you, you really do need to wash your stuff for your makeup in hot water. That's the best thing for it to sanitize and also to get any stains out is washing stuff in super hot water. So um, yeah, so just keep a cloth on hand and then if you start to get a little bit sweaty, which I usually do, especially coming out of the shower, you've got something where you can just kind of gently pat yourself um, instead of using toilet paper or using um, tissues because especially if you are in a hotter climate, so if you're traveling somewhere tropical and you don't live somewhere tropical and you're used to having, you know, oh, I've just got my little glow, I'll just pat it with a tissue. If you go somewhere really hot, you can actually, the tissue can break down and stay on your face a little bit and you can get like extra lint and fuzzies. So just use a face cloth, it's, it's way, way handier. So I'm not putting any foundation or any, um, concealer that's the word yep I'm not putting any of that on today and I've done already a little concealer video which that was actually the day that I did some new headshots as well and I really was so pleased with the natural and no makeup effect that those photos turned out like once I had a look at them afterwards with just a little bit of concealer and it's not that my skin looked perfect it didn't look like it was airbrushed it looked real and that's what I wanted was for my skin to look real and just have you know a fairly even tone not too dark under circles uh, circles under my eyes so um, so now the next thing I'm just going straight in for mascara and then deciding what I want to do after that because I do want to shoot my channel trailer today and I thought you know I <laughs> I do almost all of my videos in such a uh, candid state no visits or very few visits to the pretty department before the camera starts rolling and I wanna keep doing that for you, but I am a very girly girl, so for as little makeup as you see me wearing on this channel, I love makeup. I love doing people's makeup, I love trying new makeup, I've been a makeup junkie for pretty much as long as I can remember the first time that I went out and bought a palette. Um, I was probably 10 or 11 and I wasn't even allowed to wear makeup out of the house but my parents still let me buy it so that I could experiment with it um, but yeah so anyway we're gonna go with mascara this is my favorite mascara and sorry it's not really working so I've got blinds here but this is called they're real and it's by benefit cosmetics and it is it, it works on pretty much any lash type that I have tried. I have friends who have very long lashes. I have friends who have barely any lashes whatsoever. And the brush shape is my favorite because it does have like this little round peak at the top. Oh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> we still need to figure out our system. We're figuring out as we go. You're on from the beginning of the journey with me. So anyhow, I like to take a little hand mirror and catch it so that I can see sort of the sides of my eye. So if you've got white walls or a white door or background that you can tilt the mirror and see the contrast against, that's the best way to go. Um, and yes, it is possible to do your mascara without having your mouth agape. It just takes lots of practice. So you don't wanna open your eyes super, super wide when you're doing your own mascara and I'll tell you why because you're gonna wind up getting a whole bunch of mascara up here if you do that the mascara needs a second or two to dry before it doesn't it's not tacky anymore and doesn't start getting all over the place but regardless I'll show you my tricks for cleaning that up after the fact because yes at least once a week, guaranteed, I still, uh, my hand shakes or something and I end up with a mascara wand poked inside my eye. So I'm just doing this very gently while it's still wet so that I can kind of feather it out a little bit. And then 
I try and pick out the lashes so that they're not in clumps, especially in the corners, so they fan out nicely. And that looks good on pretty much any lash type because you want to maximize the amount of lashes that you see. And the nice thing about this is that not only does it help to lengthen and thicken, it also helps to curl the lashes. Um, I personally don't use a lash curler very often. Uh, I find because, I, oh, hang on a sec, because I have crazy, I have crazy lashes. Uh, they're, they're quite long, it's just you can't really see the tips of them. Um, but I find I, I don't have to curl my lashes with this at all because the mascara seems to give it that little extra curl. And I don't know how they did that. I'd be really interested and I'm sure it's a super sciencey answer that I would be all over. Sorry, that's my light that keeps hitting my shirt. Um, but even just with the top lashes done here, There we go. Even just with the top lashes here, you can kind of see from the sides that, you know, they're they're quite spread out, they're fanned out, and it's not a super heavy, thick coat. And I could go out like this, or I could do the bottom lashes, and I would like bottom lashes today, so we're gonna do that. And you'll have to excuse my room today. It's been kind of a few days in bed, and I'm feeling motivated to do some videos for you so that I can uh, start having some more variety of content on this channel for you. So I was like, no, you know what? This channel is all about being the real deal. And <laughs> today you guys get to see my hair undone and my bed undone and uh, the whole the whole nine yards. So you're you're in my house today. Okay, so bottom lash is done. If you have lashes that are clumping together, um, I would highly recommend that you get, let me just see if I can find mine. Sorry, I've got to do something about this lighting situation here. But there is such a thing as a lash comb by Tweezerman. I'm just gonna see if I can find mine here. Ha, ha found it. Okay, this is the Lash Comb by Tweezer Man. It is, and yes, I do, <laughs> sorry, there's like fuzz on it. I do clean this regularly um, with, uh, you know, with makeup remover and I sanitize all of my brushes regularly as well. But um, this one just, you know, it when, when you just go to give it a little wipe, the mascara tends to sort of get a little bit more in between. But these are like pokey pin sharp, so you do have to be really careful. But all you want to do is just gently kind of wiggle them back and forth if from the base of the lash as close as you feel comfortable in getting. And then just give it a little, little tiny flicks. And your lashes will come out beautifully. Now, the wetter your lashes are, the more product will come off onto the comb. So just maybe let that set, so let it dry a little bit. And if you feel you need to thicken your lashes a little afterwards, then go for it. But this is essentially all I would do. Um, this is more than I would necessarily do on an everyday. I'm a mascara everyday person with clean skin and the luminizer just to go that extra little step if I wanted to go with some blusher or put some eyeshadow on I would probably use something that's quite light or neutral um, not necessarily with a huge amount of sparkle or shimmer unless I want to do something fun I wake up some mornings and I'm like I want to be sparkle princess and so the you know little bit of the really fine fine sparkles come out and go into my eyeshadow and it just you know a very light sprinkling of that just makes it it, like pixie dust fell into my day so but that's a really simple again basic face without all of the talking and without me describing all of my prep and routine this probably takes less than five minutes so you know if you need to pare it back even more do your moisturizer do your mascara and away you go I do not recommend that you do eyeliner only because eyeliner only will make your eyes look smaller and more tired if you are not putting anything on your lashes. So if you don't want to put mascara on, 
just even a coat of really sheer lip gloss without any color is nice. It adds a little bit of radiance to your face, especially if you're feeling like it's kind of dull or dry. Um, blush, you can go in so many different directions, but most of the time, just a really lovely clean face that's properly moisturized and a little luminizer, you don't really need that much blush. These days, I hardly ever need blush because my personal internal thermostat is busted. It's been busted for the last decade and that has to do with the autoimmune condition and the rare genetic disorder that I have and also with fibromyalgia. All three of those things can make your internal thermostat feel incredibly wonky. So you you know it doesn't matter what temperature it is inside. I'll go from subpolar to tropical and then back to polar again within a span of 15 minutes to half an hour. So I, I really try not to add too much color to my cheeks because my cheeks get quite rosy enough on their own without it. Um, if you are looking for a really nice blush that is wonderful, Bella Bamba from Benefit Cosmetics is one of my favorites. It is just this beautiful pinky with just a hint of peach and a slight shimmer shimmer not sparkle shimmer just a little bit so it kind of gives you a glow and it's it's beautiful and because it's fairly bright you can use it on almost any skin tone now if you are a person of color and you are feeling like you're really washed out and that your skin is just not cooperating with you let me see if I've got one handy I don't know if I have one of my really bright ones handy oh yeah so something like um, oh no that's not even that th this one's called pinch me it's a beauty control blush um, that's not even as bright as I would go. I would say go all the way, go all the way bright pink or bright coral and just make sure that it's really well blended into your prepped skin and that will just give you a, a little bit of a glow without a heavy makeup look, okay? We're not talking runway, we're not talking for film and TV, we're not talking stage. We're talking walking around in bright sunlight. Doing your makeup for nighttime and for darker environments is a whole different kettle of fish. Same thing if you are doing your makeup for black and white. Um, but when it just comes to your everyday stuff, have fun with it, you know? Um, I've mentioned Wayne Goss before. I adore him and it made me laugh so hard the first time I say, say or first time he said this, he says, you know, people just relax. It's just makeup, you can wash it off. And I do believe that. You know, you don't get good at essentially painting someone's face or painting your own face without having a few mistakes along the way. And sometimes it's just, it's a whoo, little bobble in your hand, or it could be that you chose a color that looks great on the palette, it looks great on the back of your hand, you put it on your face, and it changes the tone of the pigment completely you won't know until you try. So just go out and try and have fun. And if you're looking for an inexpensive place to get really good quality cosmetics, go to your TJ Maxx, your Marshalls, your winners of the world. Those stores will have discount cosmetics that are usually, there's a lot of them that are available in the larger stores like Sephora and at Nordstrom. You will find the department store brands um, at much lower prices. Now you'll also find your good variety of drugstore cosmetics and that's okay too. One of my favorite mascaras as an alternative to the Benefit mascara that I love is by L'Oreal and it's fantastic and it has, it's actually just a little spiky ball applicator so it's like the tip of what the Benefit their real applicator is like. Um, and it's a it's a wonderful formula and it works on all kinds of lashes so again if you have really short lashes you want to find a brush that is going to be fine enough to get in and touch those little short lashes without getting on your eyelid and making it all clumpy now just for a quick touch up just you know okay I know it's the days of COVID-19 right now and people are all about don't touch your face and your saliva and your sweat and your boogers and all of that. Normally I would say Q-tip in the mouth 
and saliva is one of the best makeup removers there is but in lieu of that for something that may be a little bit more palatable and appease some people that kind of have issues with that okay here's my CeraVe moisturizer okay it's not even makeup remover it's moisturizer I just put like a little tiny tiny dot on here I don't know if it's gonna focus but anyway there's just a little tiny bit and all you do is you swirl it with the way that the cotton bud is wrapped so it's like you want to tighten up the wrap of the cotton bud and then all you do is just go over and just touch lightly now because i tend to have a lot of mascara gobbing some days <laughs> i tend to do this i tend to do this um, before i put any eyeshadow or eyeliner on however Having said that, if you do prefer to put your mascara on last, what you want to remember is if you've just gobbed mascara all over your eyelid and gone, oh, I can't believe I did that, wait until it dries. Take a dry cotton bud and just gently kind of wiggle it and it'll actually come right off where the eyeshadow is and you will probably have to touch up your shadow a touch, like just a little bit but at least it's not gonna smear all over your face. You never wanna add wet to dry when you're trying to remove something. You want to go dry to dry, or in this case, I have lots of moisture on my face right now. I wanna keep that moisture, so I've added a little bit of moisture so that I can get the color off. It's supposed to be fun, so have fun. If you guys all saw you know, how much makeup I've accumulated over the years, um, from just having different purposes and needs for them, whether it was special events or if it was for weddings or whatever. Um, you know, we'll talk about product longevity in another video, but it's, uh, you know, I have quite the collection because I'm, I'm just such a fan. So if you have questions about makeup, please drop them in the comments below, or if there's products that you love as well that are, you know, similar or quite different to these ones, hey, you know what, I'm all up all up for suggestions I'm all ears so just tell me be sure that you give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to this video and don't forget forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all of our videos are landing on YouTube and this video lives in the star studio uh, playlist so you can see where I'm keeping all of my skincare and makeup tutorials for sick moms and busy moms and just busy people who love makeup so anyway, for today, folks, I'm just checking out and it is Sick Mom saying have an awesome day.